Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Crusader Kings 2 Conclave as Scotland. So in our last episode, we successfully defended against the latest crusade for Jerusalem, or Jihad for Jerusalem, rather. Uh, only took a white piece, but that is just as good, really. And we've just been at peace since then, and we probably are going to stay at peace for a while because we do have a lot of threat that is causing all of the defensive packs against us to merge together. Uh, which makes it pretty much impossible for us to declare war on most of the people that we want to declare on. Even the Indian religion characters over here. Uh, if we were to try to declare war on him. If we could only fight the Hindu characters, that would be great. But unfortunately, we're going to have to fight everybody if we want to do that. So at some point, we'll be able to attack just them by themselves, and we'll do that. Uh, alternatively, we also are trying to kill the king of Norway right now because we have a claimant to that title, which uh, is something we'd like to maybe do something with at some point, but we can't right now. Uh, I'd actually... Let's see, I don't think anybody here is bribable, but maybe we can speculative, speculatively try to bribe some of these people, just in case. It used to be the case that some of these people would display a the thumbs down icon instead of the yellow icon when they could actually be bribed, but I'm not sure if that's the case anymore. I think it might have been fixed so that the indicator is actually accurate. We'll send a few speculative speculative bribes to these people anyway, as long as they're fairly cheap. I won't even bother checking the pluses and minuses when it's 15 gold. Nah, seems unlikely. Okay. No worries. King of Poland revoking things. Okay. Alright, so we do have the hunting focus at the moment, so we'll probably go on some hunts as soon as we can get rid of the stressed traits, which uh, I don't think the hunting focus is actually going to help us do... If we had carousing, I think that helps you get rid of it. So maybe that should have been something to think about when we changed our focus. Yeah, that's okay though. Hopefully we'll lose it at some point. We have a peasant revolt over in Poland. Well, hopefully the king of Poland will just take care of this for us. Consumption, okay. Sorry if you can... Ooh, Denmark just conquered something over there. Uh, sorry if you can hear any bangs and thumps in the background, by the way. I think my upstairs neighbors are having an especially noisy day for some reason. Hopefully it's not too annoying. Maybe you can't even hear it, which would be great. In some tech points, that's good. And we have a son, Indolf who needs an education focus. He's rowdy, fussy, and brooding. Okay, well, he's best at learning, but we probably don't want to focus on that if we can avoid it. So fussy is good, rowdy is bad for intrigue. Probably go with stewardship, I guess. Marshall would also be fine. Let's go with stewardship. All right, there goes our peasant revolts. We'll execute this guy. Seems like a good use of 20 piety to me. Alright, our Grand Mayor is happier. And there's a revolt in Denmark. I guess they probably just inherited something, actually, rather than... ...conquering us. No, he conquered it as a claimant, okay. Well, fair enough. Danish Revolt being led by a five-year-old. Okay, interesting. Speaking of Denmark, he has apparently left the defensive pact. All right, our vassal, the Duke of Lothian, says, Loyal servants such as I surely deserve some recognition and rewards from time to time. It is widely known that you hold huge lands and many titles. Well, you flatter me, but yes. And are as generous as you are wise. Perhaps you could, would consider granting this humble servant the county of Fife. Well, the chances of that happening are somewhere between slim and absolute zero, but I guess it doesn't hurt to ask. 
I guess we have the option to say no in, in a diplomatic way, so he isn't annoyed, which I think is going to be the best option instead of giving him a favor to hold over us. Sounds good. All right, Prince Neil, our son. Uh, as he's growing older, I can see that Neil could use some guidance in some of my experienced areas. So I think, again, we'll probably avoid doing any of these things. I think, in, in fact, I think we're already out of patience, or... No, he must have just lost it from the last time. No, we'll say he must learn on his own. Justice is a harsh mistress, and I can't love her anymore, so we lose the trait just, which we actually only recently gained. So that's kind of unfortunate. Oh well. Um, I do want to have a look at the succession, though. Who's currently in line? So Roderick's still in line. Next is our son, who I think we are the only person voting for. Really would not like to inherit as Roderick. Just because of his age, though actually he's a pretty good character. Eh, maybe it would be okay, even. Let's see who else we have available to nominate. Um, our daughter Kenna, obviously not likely to be voted for under Tanistry because she's a direct child of ours. Radolf here would be decent. 19-year-old, strong character. I'm gonna switch my vote to him anyway. Uh, just click on him, of course. I don't expect anyone to change their votes. I'd really like to outlive Roderick. Your half-brother Earl Roy has sent you a gift. It is a small puppy, but of the finest pedigree and destined to grow into a great hunting dog. I will, of course, accept this gracious gift. So this gives us plus one health and diplomacy as well, which at least counteracts the health benefit or health penalty of being stressed, even if it doesn't actually get rid of the trait. Let's call him... Faithful. Young Neil is showing strong tendencies toward prideful behavior. We can have a chance of him becoming ambitious, or... We can have him lose haughty and become proud. Uh, definitely we want to take the chance of him becoming ambitious, I think, which is good. Even if he also, as a child of ours, is unlikely to be the next emperor. The White Stag. Lately you have heard persistent rumors from peasants and travelers in the wilds that a strange mythical beast has been sighted in your realm. It's a White Stag. Powerful and elusive. The common folk claim it comes from another world. Now the hunter who claims it will be imbued with divine power. Well, of course we'll send people to find it. Okay, our daughter Kenna has finished her education in the ways of war, and I notice with pride that she has attained nothing less than a masterful level of knowledge. What a great character. Good for her. She's a brilliant strategist, and uh, she seems to trust everyone, lacking any notion of the evil in man, so we can try to make her charitable, which would be good. A bonus to diplomacy, I think. Maybe negative to intrigue? Not sure. Or we can try to make her trusting, which is definitely a negative to intrigue. So I think we'll go for charitable, and she didn't become charitable, she, be she became trusting instead, but not a huge penalty there. Uh, we should definitely try to get her married though, preferably to a strong character and matrilineally, which is probably going to be difficult. Uh, there actually is a strong character available that we could get. Unfortunately he's chased, but I guess the plus 10 fertility at least somewhat cancels out the minus 15. Uh, yeah, I guess we go for that. This way she'll stay in our court and we can make use of her talents. Uh, we can appoint her commander as well, which I guess we'll do. Um, alternatively, though, we could not appoint her commander and instead we could appoint Roderick. Even though he's probably terrible. He's actually a average commander. I'm gonna do that just to slightly improve the chances of him dying. We'll try to use him in battles. A 
Okay, so that marriage happens. How is this war going over here? Only 24% in favor of King Callum the Monk. Okay. Well, he should get it won eventually. It looks like he has yeah, a very large army here. That'll be one fewer county over here. Alright, we have collected a pretty large amount of gold, so why don't we go ahead and spend some of that on some upgrades. I guess everything is pretty expensive at this stage, so we'll just go ahead and build things. We'll do training grounds there, that's fine. Barracks also fine. Well, I guess since we can do castle walls, we should probably do that since it's cheap and actually increases our tax income slightly. Of course, where we do have cheaper options, we'll take those. Okay, so what threat are we at now? Down to 82. Is this enough to allow us to declare war on only a single religious group? No, it's not. Okay. All right, we had a subject converted. Uh, let me just check on what my chaplain is doing. It's in Sanna down here. Uh, which is already converted, so we need to move him. And I apparently have some retinue down here. I guess this is when I inherited these duchies. The uh, former holder had retinue that I inherited. Okay, well, I'm actually just going to disband this. I don't think we are in particular need of having any retinues. Although it might be worth considering just building some. Your dog is growing quickly and is no longer a little puppy. He runs fast and has a keen nose, and your dog handlers praise his good character. Uh, the reason I would consider building retinues, even though not having them is working out pretty well for us, is because it will just make things a little bit easier to wage war over in an area so distant from where most of our levies will be coming from. Just having an already raised army that we can have in this vicinity before we declare war. But I guess that's okay. What is our retinue cap, actually? Yeah, we could have a pretty decently sized army, I guess. But then it cuts our income substantially. Young Indolf is showing tendencies to be more of a doer than a thinker. Yes, that would be a kind way to describe it. So our poor unfortunate son is going to possibly become dull like his father. Which obviously we don't want, so instead we'll try to make him become brave. Nope, he's dull. Okay. Well, what can you do? We have received credible reports of a recent sighting of the Great White Stag in the province of Norfolk. Saddle my horse. Let's have a check on our plot again. We're actually up to 98% here, and there is somebody who's bribable now, so we should actually be able to get this over 100%. 102. Okay. Uh-oh. I don't feel too well. Something is wrong with me. I am burning up with fever, and my nose is running, and my head feels as if someone is banging something hard against it. We gained the trait ill. Okay, well, along with uh, stress, that's not great, but we do have a uh, plus one from health and also, of course, the extra plus one from our hunting dog. So this is altogether just a minus one to our base health, which is still not good because we're 53 years old. We're not exactly young anymore, but hopefully it's not bad enough to kill us immediately. 
you gathered your followers and your hunting dogs, you've saddled your horse and prepared your weapons, you are ready to set out to hunt the Great White Stag. An epic hunt it shall be. Let's hope so. You spend weeks in the wilderness searching for any trace of your prey, but to no avail. However, you find that you rather enjoy being out in the wilds. All the daily physical activity, it makes you feel stronger. So we have a 20% chance to gain the trait Brawny, which would be great. An extra plus one to health. I think you used to gain the actual strong trait from this event. Which obviously is even better because it's inheritable, but... I'll take Brawny, that's fine. If we get it. Which we didn't. I am sad. But we did at least gain plus one marshal. You return to your court, the hunt for this elusive white beast seems fruitless, but there are many more things out there in the wilds. Maybe next time you'll catch your prey. Or maybe next time we'll catch the brawny trait. Which, honestly, I would prefer. Alright, we had a kinswoman born. Okay. Nothing particularly special there. As she's growing older, I can see that Breed could use some guidance in some of my experienced areas. Uh, okay. Not sure why we're educating this character, but uh, that's fine. We definitely don't want to be out of patience, so we'll just say she must learn on her own. Uh, oh, okay. The Kaiser is no longer tied to us by marriage, so I guess Ella, who just returned to our court, was the tie there, but she doesn't seem to have a former husband listed. Oh well. Let's see if we can find a genius for her to marry, maybe. Uh, we can take a 23-year-old lunatic genius. Yeah, seems fine. Oh no, wait. We need it to be matrilineal. Uh, this is fine then. Have more genius children for our dynasty. <laughs> I guess we could have also married her to uh, one of these other people. Or actually, the Kaiser wants to rearrange a betrothal. Maybe we'll take this instead. Yeah. Okay, so the other marriage proposal that we sent is rejected because we have accepted the one from the Kaiser. That's fine. This way we can get back our non-aggression pact with him. And even form an alliance if we want to, which I don't think we have any reason to do until we're actually going to go to war. Uh, Ian Dunbar, our kinsman. He is playful, conscientious, and haughty. So... Haughty is bad for stewardship. Intrigue, I guess, would be good. Unfortunately, it's uh, one of his worst areas. I guess we'll go for it, though. What are we up to here? 41%. You really should hurry this up a bit. The world is a dangerous place and devious plots are everywhere. Rumors have reached you that people are conspiring to kill your son, Indulf. Are they, or are we just paranoid? Either way, we are worried about it. But I don't think there's any need to send him into hiding. Everyone at court loves your dog, especially the children find much joy in playing with him. And he loves them. Okay, so all of the children at court get uh, plus 10 opinion of me, which is nice. Alright, we're down below 80% threat. We'll see if that is enough to enable us to declare a war. Our vassal king of Sweden, though, has died. 
is no longer our spy master. So his successor is not a great character and definitely won't be a good replacement as spy master. He is a powerful vassal though and expects to be on the council. Let's see what we have that we can appoint here though. Oh. One of the uh, Jewish characters who arrived at our court could be a good candidate. Obviously not a powerful vassal. Our Queen of Ireland also is a potential candidate there. I will just appoint you, that's fine. I think we're having much in the way of trouble from factions, so... That's fine. Um, we, yeah, we do have two advisor titles available, so if we need to grant them to somebody, we can. Uh, I guess we'll appoint Princess Kenna as our marshal, or we could just replace uh, Radulf here with her as our marshal. Did I say marshal the first time? I meant commander. If so. Yeah, she is much better at that job, and this way... We don't re w risk losing her in combat before she can have lots of genius children for us. If we ever get into combat, of course. Uh, our wife can be a commander then, I guess, or we'll just appoint Radolf. Seems fine. Okay, let's see if a war declaration is a good idea at this point. Still no. Okay, so we'll have to wait a little while longer, but we are out of time for this episode, so we'll leave it here for now. Thanks for watching, and join me again next time.